HQ, we're about to head to Helmer to do a product photo shoot for them. So it'll be super cool to be have our first experience riding some Icelandic gravel. But it's gonna be a really fun time. I can't imagine where else I would rather be right now. Okay, so I'm going to do a very quick uh, rift race recap for you. Um, here and my traditional Icelandic sweater bike jersey, complete with jersey pockets in the back. So it's gonna be very warm this winter. So the race overall was pretty slow for me. Um, my time was nothing to be like boasting about or whatever, but um, I'm really happy that I finished. Um, overall, I think I probably would have quit 50 times if this was in Kansas, um, but it's not in Kansas, it's in Iceland, and it was insanely beautiful, so just as slow as I was going was taking in the scenery. Um, the first half of the race, I mean, both halves were pretty hard, but the first half was almost all climbing, so that just took forever for me, and I don't really enjoy climbing, so I was just in agony the whole time, um, and to top it off, I fell in the river in the very first river crossing. So, yeah, um, it rained pretty much the whole day. Um, I don't even know what the sun is at this point. We didn't see the sun at all. Like, on and off, like, cold, but not shivering cold the whole day. The only thing was, like, my feet were frozen from the first river crossing. I, like, went, put my gloves on, took my gloves off, put my gloves on, took my gloves off. Um, so just, like chugging along and then I got to the aid station at the like halfway point and the guy there informed me that Chris had crashed and that he was not hurt but he wasn't going to keep racing which was a little confusing to me because if he was totally fine I didn't know why he wouldn't keep racing so I just kept thinking about that and then I got to the next aid station after that and the lovely photographer um was there that was like the first one to get to Chris after he crashed and he filled me in a little more that he was not in serious injured in any way but they were taking him to the hospital to get checked out so basically the rest of the race I just went back and forth with should I drop out and go find Chris or should I finish and ultimately I decided I should probably finish because that's what he would want me to do so I just kept slowly chugging along um at around mile 92 my computer just stopped recording distance and was only recording time so I felt like that kept making things go on forever and ever and before I it was like 15 minutes until I realized that that happened so I just kept looking and I'm like this is the longest mile ever then I realized and I just kind of tried to at each checkpoint figure out how many kilometers were left and kind of calculate how long that should take me and to gauge myself based on my overall time. Um, and also, which was really awesome, there was someone at each aid station that was like checking in with me with updates on how Chris was doing. So that made me feel a little bit better about continuing on. Um, the second half of the course was so washboardy. Um, I was so happy that I was on a lap with a really nice suspension fork in the front. I was actually able to make up quite a bit of time on some other athletes in those sections that weren't on lav bikes, um, which was really nice. It gave me some confidence boosting. Yeah, I think I was like the only person out there that had aero bars on their bike, but 
damn was I happy I had hit aero bars on my bike every time we got to a pavement section because I was just tucked down and put my head down and pedal and it just felt so good to be in like a different position and using my leg muscles a little differently so I do not regret leaving my aero bars on one bit even though people might have made fun of me for it so overall as hard as it was um it's definitely a bucket list race so if you ride, ride gravel you should definitely come do the rift even if it's going to be cold and rainy and windy it was so windy i don't think i mentioned that so windy um but yeah so we'll try and check in tomorrow when we get back to reykjavich and hopefully chris is feeling a little bit better hey guys just wanted to jump in and say i'm okay the crash that happened in iceland was definitely one of the most like scary moments like of my cycling career. It happened about seven kilometers into the race in a very isolated area. I don't have like total like memory of exactly how it would happen. Essentially, I was going down uh, one of the steep sides, kind of down just the hills there. And it's very sandy gravel. And the best that I can gather is that at some point at a very high speed, went over a deep patch of sand, jerked my front wheel and I cross threaded and went over the bar going about 30 miles an hour. And I ended up landing Kind of right on the top of my head and then sliding down at the time i really cut my face a couple places most importantly though my limb helmet cracked in half but i did not suffer any concussion what did happen that uh, i'm still slightly dealing with is your body to kind of protect your neck and your back will make all the muscles in your back kind of rigid just to protect and take the impact so my body doing that correctly kind of engaged all the muscles in my back and my neck and then i impacted and all those muscles became strained i was in a lot of pain for quite a few days any sort of movement i luckily there was a photographer who was able to radio the ambulance and they have these uh roaming ambulance cars kind of for the race uh they were able to stretcher me out of there at the time when i crashed i actually thought that i had probably broken my back or my neck uh ended up going to the icelandic hospital the care that lauf kind of gave me during this ordeal was phenomenal i cannot say like enough good things about what they did i love and respect them so much and i'm like so grateful to have them in my life even now i'm still dealing with some uh impacts from the crash and things in my back sneezing and like really deep breaths do hurt still i'm able to ride and train normally and i've even raced since then uh but i really just wanted to let you guys know that i'm okay i'm going to be okay and everything is fine and it's all thanks to just the amazing people in the icelandic medical staff and the entire Lao family for taking care of me. Just wanted to give you guys that update.